Scientology makes headlines for its Hollywood A-list members like Tom Cruise and John Travolta and for being a religion shrouded in mystery. But now a young woman with family ties to the leader of Scientology is talking about growing up in the controversial church in her new book, Beyond Belief, My Secret Life Inside Scientology and My Heroine Escape. Please welcome Jenna Miscavige Hill. Hi, Jenna. Welcome to the show. You know, now all four of your grandparents were Scientologists. Today, your uncle David Miscavige is the leader of the church. And when you were two years old, your parents became members of the Sea Org, and that's the uh, inner core, the staff and leadership of the church. That's what that is. Now, when you were six in 1990, Jenna, you went to live on the ranch. And the ranch is a boarding school for church executives' <laughs> children. So when you were at this ranch, how often did you see your parents you know, from, from the time you were six, did you, did you see your parents at all? Um, yeah, I mean, from the time I, I went to the ranch, actually a little bit before, from when I was four until I was 12, I generally saw my parents only once a week, and it was only for a few hours on okay. Sunday morning. And what about the time when you left the church when you were 21? How often did you see them? From when I was 12 until I was 18, I only saw my mom twice total. From the time you were 12 till you were 18? Yes, yes. And um, from the time that, yeah, also from when I was 12 till I was 18, I saw my dad about four times, and two of those times were for less than an hour. Wow. And at the age of seven, you, you write that you had to sign a billion-year contract? Mm -hmm. A billion years, really? Yes. <laughs> so tell us what that is, and the concept of, and I don't want to mispronounce it, Thetans? Thetans. 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 What is a Thetan? In Scientology, a Thetan is basically a spirit, and so you live lifetime, they believe that you live lifetime after lifetime, and, um, you know, after your body dies, you pick up a new body, and so, sort of, as children, it's like, as a Thetan, you've lived for billions and billions of years, so as a child, your body is just like a shell or like a piece of meat. And so really, even though you are you have a young body, they believe that you're still a Thetan who's billions of years old. And so for that reason, we sort of got treated like adults. Wow. Now, you know... I like to pick up a new body. <laughs> you know, it'd be a thing. Yeah. Now, when you're growing up on the ranch, now this ranch uh, closed in 1999, you write that you had no relationship with people outside the church. And you guys called outsiders wogs. Yeah. You call them wogs. And you say that your days at the ranch were spent studying, doing physical chores. That's mm -hmm. what, now, the Church of Scientology, they gave us these pictures of the ranch that we're seeing right now. Now, I, I got to say, it looks really pretty. It looks normal. great. It looks normal. Mm -hmm. It looks like a camp. So what was yeah. your typical day at this ranch? You know, the things that it shows in the picture, like, for example, those dressers, we varnished all of them. The rock walls that you might have seen, we hauled the rock. So the reason the ranch is so beautiful is because we, the children, worked four hours every single day, and we made it that way. Isn't that against the law, child labor laws and all? Yeah. So you, you basically were building that ranch. Yes, every day for four hours. When I first came to the ranch, it was just a dusty, you know, there was a few buildings, but we did, we did all the work to make it look that and, way. And you also say that if you misbehaved, you got a chit, mm -hmm. which was kind of like a demerit that a kid would get. So what, explain that a little bit. What, what would you have to do to get this chit? Well, you could get a chit from doing anything from, like, picking your nose or not doing your work, not finishing your duties, speaking badly about a superior or badly about Scientology. And, you know, the penalties range from being made to do amends to having a bucket of ice water dumped on your head. As, 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 as a child? child? As a child. Yes, yes. Can I, can I ask a question? Because I, it's something I've always wondered. What exactly is Scientology? What, what, do, you, what do Scientologists believe? Mm -hmm. um, well, Scientologists, they believe in Thetans, like I said before, that you live lifetime after lifetime. They don't, you know, they don't have a god, you know, they don't worship anything. 
Yeah. All right. I, we have to. We, we received a statement from the church, which reads in part: "The church will not discuss private matters involving Miss Hill, nor any of the efforts to exploit Mr. Miscavige's Mr. Miscavige's name." We note that recollections in Mrs. Hill's book about her schooling are dramatically at odds with the recollections of 30 of her classmates. Their personal memories describe the exact same school as an idyllic summer camp and boarding school-like environment. Far from expressing inconveniences, annoyances, and bitterness, they describe experiences leading to lifelong friendships while at an educational and spiritual foundation. The church has long respected the family unit while accommodating and helping those raising children. So that's what they've said. Okay, yeah. let's move. Okay, now a large portion of your book talks about being audited, mm -hmm. and you yourself wanted to be an auditor. What what is an auditor? What is it? What, what does an auditor do? I mean, auditing is sort of Scientology's form of counseling, where you sit in a room with another person, and the subject is hooked up to the e meter, which is similar to a lie detector and um, basically the auditor asks questions whether they're confessional type mm -hmm. questions mm -hmm. and the e-meter is supposed to show like basically influences from the subconscious or reactive mind as Scientologists call it. Well Jenna we've got some more stuff to ask you don't go away. Jenna Miscavige Hill is staying with us and we'll be right back. Cabbage Hill, the author of the new bombshell book, Beyond Belief, My Secret Life Inside Scientology and My Harrowing Escape. So, Jenna, um, you know, you talk about uh, celebrities. There are celebrities within Scientology. We all know who they are at this yeah. point. Tom Cruise, John Travolta. Uh, and you say that they're treated differently. How, how so? The Scientology experience that celebrities experience is completely different than the average public Scientologist. For one thing, they have their own church, which is so much more beautifully decorated alone than every other church. Um, they have their own private entrances. They have their own private classrooms. They're only allowed to have certain auditors, the most highly trained and that sort of thing. I would say one of the main things is that they're not constantly bombarded for requests for donations or... They're not? No, they're not. Not in the way that the average public Scientologist really? is, which is... It's interesting because they have a lot more money too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do their children also go to the to the camp? No, because the the ranch is more for Sea Org is for Sea Org children. Yes, and the Sea Org is like the clergy of the church, right. where you sign billion year contracts, and it's sort of like a paramilitary mm. organization. Wow, wow. That's what it sounds like yeah. So Jenna, you, but your parents eventually left Sea Org, as did both your brothers. But you stayed on for a few more years, and then you finally made the decision to leave in 2005. Mm. What made you decide to leave? I mean, it was a whole lifetime of experiences that sort of came to a head. You know, I realized that it just wasn't the place that I always thought it was. You know, I could no longer look away from the abuse, the mental, the physical, verbal, and I just realized that I wasn't helping anyone, and the people there weren't happy, and I wasn't happy, and that I had to get out. Mm. Now, you met your husband, Dallas, while you were in the church, correct? Yes. And you say that the, the Church of Scientology, they made it difficult for you to stay married mm -hmm. and to leave the church together. Explain that. Yes, when I decided I wanted to leave, Dallas said that he was going to go with me. And in the following weeks, they actually were pulling him aside in secret meetings and telling him bad things about me, bad things about my family, and trying to convince him to stay. And even told him that if he didn't stay, that he would not he would not be able to speak to his family. Oh, wow. And nice. it actually, yes, and it got to the point where I was at the airport about to leave, and he told me all of this. And their plan sort of backfired on them, and the next day we wound up leaving together. And nice. we've never looked back. I have to ask you, are you worried about the reaction the church has to your book? I definitely don't live in fear of the church. I mean, I know my book tells the truth, mm -hmm. and I'm just happy that it's out there. And, I mean, it's never nice to have lies about you out there, mm -hmm. but... Um, I mean, I have two children, you know, I have a whole life going on now, so right. I'm more concerned about dirty diapers and children sleeping <laughs> right. through the night. You didn't I want to have, have children when you were there, right? You were not allowed to have children. Yes, in the C organization, you're not allowed to have children. Wow. If, yes. So now you guys are both out, and what do you do for work? How do you guys take care of yourselves? 
Um, well, my husband works at an action sports company. He does IT work, like okay. computer. Yes, and I, I was working at a pet food company and I did nutritional consultations, okay. but I recently stopped working to stay home with my kids. With the kids. Yes. Yeah. Well, as we said before, the church sent us a statement about Jen and her book. The statement went on to say, those who successfully devote themselves to any rigorous religious order do so with full commitment without any sense of entitlement. Those who decide a religious order isn't for them are free to move on with their lives, as Miss Hill did. Every religion has its detractors, revisionist history are typical of apostate behavior, and tabloid tales should always be taken with an enormous grain of salt. Oh, okay. Jenna, yeah, thank you so much. What's up the word apostate? It's, it's somebody who rebels against yes. the order. Mm -hmm. All right, and uh, we want to thank Jenna Miss Cavage Hill. Her book is called Beyond Belief, My Secret Life Inside Scientology and My Harrowing Escape. And everyone in our audience is getting a copy of Jenna's book. <laughs> I've been taking a multivitamin for years, Centrum Silver.